Welcome to Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today is really cool because, <clears throat> excuse me, by the way, if I sound weird, I just got back from the dentist, so half my face is numb. So I'm gonna try my best without biting my tongue off. Okay, let's go for it here. Um, today is gonna be cool though because this is something I've sort of been planning in the back of my mind to do uh, since we started the channel, you know, two, three years ago now. And that is to show you some of my prized records. And those of you that have been around know that I love Glenn Miller. Why I love Glenn Miller is a separate story for a different day. But basically, I used to listen to Megadeth. I used to listen to, you know, all kinds of like, you know, music that was from a completely different genre. Let's just say that, passing no judgment. Anyway, I decided to change things up in a big way. And Glenn Miller is the first big band I turned to. And to me, that was very peaceful, happy, positive music. So when I decided to get back into vinyl records a few years ago, it made more sense than anything else to try and collect that music because that's what meant the most to me. So let me preface this by saying I've really enjoyed the thrill of the hunt collecting these so far, and uh, it's definitely not done yet. And um, it's something that I, uh, I'm looking forward to discovering more things. That being said, none of this is worth a whole lot of money, but it's got a lot of personal value to me. And by the way, I want to thank you, those of you that joined us on the live last night. Uh, major kudos to my wife for helping out uh, behind the scenes, making all this stuff happen. If it wasn't for her, none of this would happen. And uh, I truly owe her uh, the greatest debt. And I owe you guys the second greatest debt for taking time to be there and to watch this uh, rambling of mine. And I really appreciate it. I appreciate everybody um, caring enough to be there. So I'm just going to show you the records. We're not going to listen to any of them. I'm just going to show them to you and you know tell you why I picked it. Uh, most of this is going to be Glenn Miller records. There's very few that are other people, but I'll explain it as we go. So this is Glenn Miller. This is one of many uh, records that is just the greatest hits, you know, from the 50s and 60s. This particular one is mono. As we've talked about in the past, a lot of the reissues are uh you know reprocessed stereo until they finally realize wait a minute it's better to go mono uh this particular one is uh i think i've got the uh, album cover up on the wall that's why it's just in the sleeve here uh, but this is the sound of glenn miller it's another one that's just um a, just the greatest hits type of release and i love listening to this stuff i truly do listen to it this is the glenn miller story so this is a soundtrack to the Glenn Miller Story movie on the DECA label. Again, this is hanging up. That's why I've got it in this slip case here. And next we have one more that is not in a, a cover, so it's not that exciting to look at. This is the new Glenn Miller in Hi-Fi. So Glenn Miller went missing uh, over the English Channel of World War II. By the way, they think they might have found his plane, which is really interesting history. But anyway, um, other members of the band took over, Ray McKinley among them in the 50s, and that is uh, what that record was. That was a Ray McKinley 50s era, Glenn Miller. The authentic sound of Glenn Miller. Now, this one says original recordings, so you don't have any um, you know, other bands doing it. I've decided to store my records outside of the album. I think it was too many records or some channel suggested this. I'm like, you know, it makes kind of a lot of sense. The only thing that sketches me out about doing this is this raised lip on the edge is higher than the middle. So I don't want it to warp up on the edge from being pressed next to that. So I try to scoot it a little bit forward. But I like the idea of the album not being constricted by the, um, by the album cover because sometimes those are deformed. Glenn Miller's Carnegie Hall concert. This is a recording from 1939. A lot of people are familiar with the Benny Goodman fam uh, famous 1937 concert that was sort of the unofficial beginning of the big band era. This uh, was a couple of years later. It was an ASCAP ceremony, and a number of bands performed. Glenn Miller's was the last to perform that night. It's kind of an all-star cast. The introduction on that is by Paul Whitman. Here we've got Marvelous Miller Moods. Now... This record, I believe it's this one is damaged, yeah. It's so good I would keep it even though it's damaged because I would literally play it, you know, starting in track number two. The reason why this is unique is this is some of his army music 
which was never meant for public consumption, but, and we're just talking LPs. I mean, we're just talking records today. So there's a whole subset of music that's come to light and been released since, you know, vinyl uh, went out of fashion the first time. And so my CD collection and digital audio collection is a lot bigger than this, but this is one of the early releases where the public could for the first time hear the fully orchestrated Glenn Miller Orchestra from his army days, which featured a full string section. And truly the story of what he did for our country is one that not many people get. They get, yeah, he went into the army and he died. Well, it's a lot more detailed than that because he did a lot of efforts. There's a lot of German language uh, propaganda broadcasts that he participated in, and a lot of that stuff is still around. You can still hear it. It's really interesting. But a super patriot and extremely American. All right, Best of Glenn Miller, Volume 2. Best Buy series, RCA. That's like their 70s logo. So that sort of dates this one. Um, I believe I have two out of the three from this collection. Again, most of the LPs are going to be greatest hits until we get into some of the other collections, with a couple exceptions. So here, yeah, Best of Glenn Miller, Volume 3. So there's from the same collection, Volume 3, very 70s, a very colorful, and uh, these lights in here are kind of yellowish, so it doesn't give the full brilliance of what I see to the naked eye here, but a very colorful and bright slip kit cover with that as well. The one, so when I replaced the uh, uh, original sleeves, and by the way, a video on that coming in the near future, when I upgraded to these ones, I kept the originals if they were interesting and just kind of put them in the back like that. So there's that. Next up, we have the best of Glenn Miller. This one is kind of interesting because it has some of the recordings done by, uh, for the movies. He was in two movies, Orchestra Wives and Sun Valley Serenade. So this, it's interesting, 1977. Also available on 8-track cartridge. Uh, but this is some uh, rarer songs. Really good, the best of the civilian band recordings because they were recorded with on optical film instead of recorded in wax like the civilian stuff. So here is one of the exceptions to the rule of this being purely Glenn Miller. This is Glenn Miller Greats by Jerry Gray. Jerry Gray, he had hired from Artie Shaw, and Artie Sh and um, he, uh, Jerry Gray led the band during the army after, in the army after Glenn Miller disappeared. And once the 1950s hit and Glenn Miller fever started up again, he didn't lead the official Glenn Miller Orchestra, but leaded his own orchestra in that style with about half of the original members. Incidentally, after the movie came out in 1954, it caused such a resurgence in popularity in the music. Do I have another copy of this? I swear we already saw this. Anyway, um, <laughs> maybe I do, or maybe we haven't seen this, I don't know. Um, it caused such a resurgence that the Glenn Miller Orchestra itself started back up again and is to this very day in operation and until COVID was touring almost all year long, all over the world. And there's actually other licensed uh, orchestras as well. Okay, next we have three discs from a French release, Glenn Miller and his orchestra, very 70s, as you can tell by the label. These ones do suffer from the added reverb. So they're a little echoey, echoey chambery. Some people refuse to listen to that stuff because it's not true to the authentic recording, the flat audio of the recording. I personally don't mind it. I think it's interesting. Here's a Camden release, RCA Camden. That was the uh, value budget label for RCA. And they re-released a number of, um, uh, of their records from the RCA Victor label on Camden. And they asked the artist to take hits on the, uh, their royalties. In fact, they tell you all about that. And um, yeah, the great records, same quality as regular RCA pressing. Tex Beneke and his orchestra, this one is also in there because Tex Beneke was in the original orchestra, as was Jerry Gray, and he took over the official orchestra after World War II for about five years. And next up we have another Tex Beneke, Moonlight Serenade. I love this 1950s artwork. I just love this stuff. Love it. You know, sometimes I am swayed by the art, I have to admit. Next up, we got Sunrise Serenade. This is another Camden set. This is a two record set. I only have one record in here, unfortunately, but it happens. 
Okay, next we have the sound of Glenn Miller. This is the uh, accoutrements of Glenn Miller, I suppose. <laughs> Some marketing person has glasses, cigarette, Chesterfields, of course. Trombone, jacket, cup of coffee. And uh, these are cool though, because every time they would reissue sort of these greatest hits type of deals, they would pick random other songs. Like this one doesn't have like the top 10. It's got some pretty, you know, a little bit more abstract, a little bit more deeper catalog stuff, like Intermezzo, Fat Hat Stomp, Moonlight Sonata, stuff like that, so. Okay, next we have great artwork on this Camden release. The great Glenn Miller and his orchestra love the artwork on this. Now obviously, by the 1950s and 60s, they're, they're marketing these towards people that remember this music from their youth. And so that's why you see it on the budget labels and stuff, because they're appealing towards more middle-aged America at that point, not the kids as much. It's more of the memories, the romantic memories of this music in their childhood. This is the first Glenn Miller record I bought when I got back into records. I paid like seven bucks for it. It's a great one. It's got one of my absolute favorites, Happy in Love. Great song. It's worth the price of admission just for that. This music to me is peaceful, it's happy, and it's got a really good, you know, just association for me. So 1980, 81-ish, the Glenn Miller Orchestra in the digital mood, they went back and recorded everything digitally and released it ironically on analog media. Although I have it on CD and cassette as well. But interesting, original uh, arrangements re-recorded Glenn Miller selections from the Glenn Miller story. Again, great artwork. Love this stuff. What do you guys collect? What is the one artist that you want to find more and more of? Tell me about it in the comments. Here's one of the ones I picked up fairly early on. Glenn Miller, a memorial. This was issued in 19... For a while, I couldn't figure out what in the world. 1944 is the year he passed away or the year he disappeared. 1969, what in the world? That's just what year this came out. There's some rarer versions that say till 1970. This is a gatefold, opens up a lot of pictures and stuff, but what's really cool is this is now mono, so we're not dealing with the phony stereo. We've done shows about that, how that works, why they did it, and we're gonna do more as well. And if you really wanna get into this stuff, um, RCA in the late 70s, went back and took all the metal parts. Those are the actual impressions from the wax studio recording, the stampers, the master, the matrix, all that stuff. They took the remaining ones and duped them to high quality studio analog tape. And from there, they issued this series. I think there was nine parts to it. I only have this one, the complete Glenn Miller with the Bluebird label. This one, has the artwork of a pillow, which is really odd. Every one of these is completely different. Um, but you can buy the whole collection. I bought the CD version of this, and I love it. I think it's really good. Some people say that it doesn't sound as good as some of the lighter recordings, but to my ears, it sounds really good. Um, another copy of this, this one's <laughs> fed a rat for a while, apparently. And uh, yeah, I actually probably ought to throw this away just because I have a better copy. I really try not to just keep crap I don't need. Okay, so that's all the LPs. Let me scoot this back a little bit. Now I want to touch on the 45. So this is a limited edition 45 set that came out in the early 50s. And this is part of RCA's efforts to market their 45 changers. And so, you know, this is an album, so to speak. It's got a booklet with art, story, blah, 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 blah. And then the records are just separated by these little slip sheets here. And like we've talked about before, they're raised in the middle. So the idea is you take the whole stack, stick them on the changer, and you can go to town. That's why it says side nine on this side, side 12 on that side, because it's all chronological, depending on where you were in the stack. So this set has uh, about 72 different songs. They are somewhat truncated. These are EPs. So there's a lot of music. This is Glenn Miller and his orchestra, limited edition, Volume one, and then I found another one. And I'm like, okay, five bucks or so, I'm gonna pick it up. So I open it up, and this one's pink. And I'm like, what? There's a pink variant? So I was like, that's odd, but I'm glad to have it. And then I came across this one, and I'm like, there's another one? 
Surely it's one of those two copied, right? Nope, this one has the Victor label. So there's at least three versions of Glenn Miller and his orchestra volume one. Now volume one makes you think there has to be a volume two. Well, there is, and it's a little bit harder to come by, but this is my copy. This particular one is uh, worse for wear, so much so that I liberated the records from the album itself. This is after I restored it. I cleaned the heck out of it, but it is super corroded. There was nasty things in here and, you know, really, really weird. Check this out. Like the way this paper's eaten away, almost like acid erosion. Look at that, how it's like deep down into there. Not even just from the edge, but like literally from the center. So this is nasty, nasty, nasty. It does have some really interesting copy with pictures at the beginning. So I resisted the urge to throw it away. Probably put it in like a big Ziploc or something. Um, but I got it as clean as I could. I rescued the records themselves and put them in these slip cases. And um, they sound good. It's a, it's a good set. It's a really good set. So volume one and volume two of those. Those are great recordings because they're radio recordings. And a lot of people that like Len Miller really like Len Miller on the radio because the band was a little bit more loose. It was a little bit more jazzy, a little bit more you know, less stuffy, so to speak. Here's a Reader's Digest version that has a very weird thing called a dirt pressing where there's a little grain of dirt on the stamper and then it materializes as a little uh, vinyl lump on the record. So there's a couple unplayable spots on there. Next up, we have Glenn Miller and his orchestra second pressing. So this green box sets that we looked at, this is the second pressing. So in the volume one second pressing, and it's huge and it's heavy, and they basically took all 10 of those 45 EPs and put them on LPs. So now we've got a little bit more real estate for those songs, although they are surprisingly still truncated, but just um, a different aspect or a different way to go about that collection there. Again, great music, great funky, funky, okay, maybe not funky, spunky radio remotes. And then finally, I've got a couple original 78s. Keep them in this case right here, um, including this Bluebird record. This was the original RCA label that Glenn Miller was signed to, although he was previous to his own band efforts, was on Columbia, was on, um, oh shoot, a couple other labels, but started off on Bluebird, which is sort of their jazzy uh, kind of, intro no one called it a budget label, but sort of their introductory label. And then by the time, you know, the mid forties hit and he was like, you know, top, you know, grade celebrity, he uh, transitioned to the uh, Victor label. So, and speaking of Victor, this is a Victor uh, record of his sleep song. So this is the premium label, obviously a shellac record. This one I believe might be a repressing. It's hard to say. You can look up these matrix numbers and find out. Uh, one more I wanted to show you. This is kind of interesting. A lot of these are dubs. Uh, these are even can be dubs, especially if they're reissues. Okay, this one right here is interesting. So this is a reissue. Um, it's from a box set, Swing Classic, as you can see up there. However, the actual pressing itself is from the original Matrix. So this is not a dub. This was not dubbed to something and then copied. This is actually pressed from an image of the original wax recording. So that is pretty unique, that's pretty special. And that was actually discovered by one of my early viewers uh, based on the matrix numbers. So anyway guys, not gonna bore you anymore with Glenn Miller, but to me that's exciting. And that's what I'm passionate about, collecting more than anything are Glenn Miller records. So I hope that that was interesting to you and got you thinking about stuff that you're excited about. And I would love to hear all about that in the comments below. But that's going to do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.